Welcome to the Out the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. I'm Ashley. And I'm Richard. And I forgot what to say right before we started. <laughs> you haven't done that many of these yet. Say that again? Uh, we haven't done that many of these podcasts. Not yet. that many, no. <laughs> Just a few. I think this is 121. Oh my God. Wow. Oh, God. Nothing. So uh, I do need to share with Ross our, our analytical spike because it's starting to look more interesting, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, uh, this is our podcast about anything and everything off-road. Uh, we generally tangent, so we've already done that in the first 30 seconds, so that's great. Um, as always, we're socially distant. Ross is in Connecticut. I'm in Kansas City, and you guys are in... Calgary, Alberta. Okay, Calgary. I figured it was... I knew it was Canada, but like I feel like one time you guys were in BC, yeah, and then one time you were in Alberta, so I was like, no, I'll just let them in. We're pretty mysterious. Nobody can keep track of where we are. Our parents actually can't keep track of us either. So, well, isn't one of your parents' address like your semi permanent address? Correct. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So just ship yeah. stuff there and it'll get to you eventually. Yep. It's also exactly. difficult keeping tabs on where you end up based on your posts because yeah. sometimes you think that you're there with what's happening and sometimes it's just disassociated postings. Yeah, it's like you're oh. home and you're, or you're back in signal. Yeah. You're in four yeah. places at once. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> On this present. Ash, have you run into that doing Overland Journal of podcasts of like trying to communicate with people and then there's like a time delay? <laughs> That's <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> the weird thing about like off-road overland podcasting that no one talks about that trying to set someone up as a guest can take months. Mm -hmm. Yes. M Mr. It's Graham true. Bell. And <laughs> And for us, I, honestly, that's yeah, true. Like, well, you guys, it's been a hot minute. Too. Right away. Yeah. Point fingers. Sorry. Yeah. It's I, sometimes with a time difference, like if I'm talking to somebody in Europe, or like I recently interviewed this this motorcyclist in Pakistan, and I was I always Amazing, get like a lot of anxiety. Oh, but yay, yay! She's awesome. <laughs> Um, but I get all this anxiety because I'm afraid that I'm going to miss the call or something's going to happen or, you know, the time difference I've calculated it wrong or whatever. So, yeah. Yes. Logistics. Yeah. Like our, our consistent Australian correspondent, I know he's a day ahead and then minus seven hours. Like I, <laughs> I got his time down. Like it's <laughs> one. Man, I have a hard enough time getting five people to show up at the trail end at the same time. <laughs> let alone do stuff around the world <laughs> <laughs> yeah during the day job now i like i'm scheduling calls with people in different locations so it's the exact same thing i'll be like wait hold on what time do i have my google calendar reminder set yes i do i'm good okay <laughs> totally fine. anyway the news this week is that they're not going to make an all-wheel drive corvette electrified all-wheel drive corvette yeah, I don't care about the electrified part i just yeah. like the all-wheel drive part <laughs> so the thing that translates to our show and off-roading because it's not really going to be an off-roader is that they've been talking about making a Corvette crossover or there it's been going like through the rumor mill for the last few years think like Lamborghini Urus but Corvette so that's first like probably coming <laughs> in the near future why so of course it is so why this wouldn't it all-wheel drive platform will inevitably translate so it's funny you mentioned an an Urus because I was I was near one yesterday. I don't, <laughs> I don't I don't know if you saw the photo I shared in Slack, but and I'm trying to get to it so fast. Um, <laughs> the disparity in the size of the front rotor, oh, front yeah. brake rotor to the rear brake rotor, like in front of like 17. It's massive. Come on. And I will apologize for the quality of this photo because of course I didn't roll down my window to take the photo. <laughs> I just went. Why'd you do that? Take a oh, because it was also like creepy. All of us were showing up at their kid activity mm. to pick our kid up, and I took a picture of the Lambo. But look how big the front rotor is You're compared to that tiny picture. little thing on the back. Those back ones are probably still at like fourteen. They're probably yeah, they're not small. Nope, <laughs> they're huge on the front. What's the plural of Urus? Uri. Uri. What's the etymology of Urus? It means bear doesn't it no that's i'm i don't speak hey, italian man. okay let's uh let's not go <laughs> my Sorry, spanglish is passable like it, um, isn't it oh so oh so 
Oso, Oso is, is Spanish. Yeah. Spanish. So here's a type of cat. Okay. Yeah. Let's, it's probably something bull because it's Liberty, but anyways, yeah. Electric Corvettes. It's a wild ox, according to the Latin. Interesting. Anyway. Yeah. The last time I saw one in person was in Montana recently. It was bright yellow and was pulled over by a state trooper. <laughs> and but the woman in it and the state trooper were laughing hysterically together. And I really wanted to know the context of what was going on there. It, yeah. Was it, it was on, probably her being like, I can't believe you caught up to me. Like, yeah. <laughs> it didn't have Montana plates because it was probably like, you know, the one wealthy person in Bozeman or something. Yeah. It was like, I that. bet I can do triple digits uh, past the, you know, traffic sign here. <laughs> well, it's, it wasn't until recent, like fairly recently, that there wasn't a speed limit on some roads in Montana. Like well, just eighty miles an hour, eighty-five. Well, that now that's what it is, isn't it? Like yeah. it's the best part of hitting South Dakota is the speed limit goes to eighty-five, and you're like, "What's up, ninety-two? Like that's, that's crazy. That's yeah. unfamiliar territory. Around so there. fastest way to Montana is through South Dakota. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> Noted. Um, Don't take I eighty through Nebraska. Go to ninety. <laughs> deal see this is the tidbits you didn't think you were gonna get tonight so yeah so for the next time you're in nebraska no don't but okay is there anything else you want to talk about with electric corvettes no it exists i i will say like a a crossover version of a corvette makes sense in some capacity because we have the aston martin dbx we have the urus we have whatever the ferrari's horrible name is Mm -hmm. we have the alfa Romeo stelvios and all those quadrifolio but the maserati levante uh, the Porsche Cayenne that kicked it all off. And the Macan. Uh, and the Macan. Oh. It, it makes sense. I, I, I will go back to the thing I said that made Brad Brunell almost cry on our show is that I think the definition of car in the coming years is going to change. It's not going to be a sedan anymore. It's just going to be these crossover utility vehicles that the next generations are going to refer to those as cars. Mm. It makes sense. It made hope, Brad super sad. Yeah, hope, yeah. What it, I'll, I'll attest to what Brad said, and it was something in the vein of "Hope I'm dead by then," <laughs> and we probably will be. Like I, I didn't, I didn't put a time limit on it when I made my <laughs> coming generations doesn't necessarily mean it, like the I next feel like, generation, like your kids, <laughs> my kids, uh, they have zero desire for small cars. Uh, my my oldest is getting ready to get his permit this summer, and he's already told me I want a Jeep, and I was like, "Well, calm down, like." <laughs> let's, let's let's pump the brakes on that. My God. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean by Jeep? <laughs> exactly. Like in like, his mind, he wants a Wrangler, and I was like, well, "How cheap of a new Cherokee can I find?" That yeah, you pronounced Highlander wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you pronounced Nissan Leaf wrong. <laughs> Which I don't even know if I want them in a, in, a, in a cheap one. I will say like my, my new job is uh, my commute went from 18 miles to 72 miles round trip going in, in, in the same metro area. That's how spread out Kansas City is. But like I'm already being like, how cheap of a Nissan Leaf can I get a hold of mm-hmm. like to make this not hurt? So, especially, of course, right now as gas prices spike and go nuts. I'm like, Go-Kart. yeah, sure. Go-Kart. Say that again. Copart.com. Uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> it's te- technically a leaf. Uh, you didn't say. In yeah, the- I, I fully. Preferably not a crashed one. Like it's- <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's move on. <laughs> there, there are mechanical guys at work, but I don't think they want me to pull, drag the carcass of a leaf in and be like, help me, guys. <laughs> like, that's not. They could probably knock up a really cool, like, fan body on it that would ruin its electric range. All right. Do you want to talk about what you have right now, or what well, I'll you talk had in about, the past? I'll talk about what I had in the past very, very, very quickly, and then what I have now, and then we'll move on. M4 competition has nothing to do with off-roading. No, um, except it was very fun for the approximately thirty miles that I put on it before a giant construction screw went through the right rear tire. Oh, um, is that or, what happened? Or it might have been there when it got dropped off. I don't know. All I know is that I drove it on Thursday when it arrived. I went and picked up a sandwich and I got home. I parked the car. I went out Friday afternoon and it was down to like 13 PSI in the right rear. And I was like, oh, that sucks. So I just 
Arctic called the fleet guy and FMI, they're the best. They came on Monday, swapped it out for an X5 hybrid, which was actually surprisingly nice. It has that really cool crystal shifter and all the like control knobs and everything are cut from, you know, like a diamond tip thing from crystals, which means like quartz. Um, but it was so, does, so driving the like X5 that. hybrid like cleanses your soul because of the all the crystals and gems that they something have. like that. Oh my god, I never put <laughs> that it in the, the moon. Oh no, I just that works. Did you press publish on your review and you could have made jokes like that? I'm stealing that, <laughs> it's yours. It, I, I mean, the record exists that I said it first, it's fine, but like yeah. you could definitely update yeah. your post. <laughs> so, anyway, so I, I put like 30 miles on the thing and and only used electric, which was nice. Um, but the M4 comp is like psycho fast. Like I know I just, I saw the M3 comp, somebody did like a 3.2, 0 to 60 and the what? M4 is about the same. And it's like, it feels as fast as the C8 Corvette, if not faster from a roll. And that's saying a lot. What um, color was your M4 comp that you had? Very gray. I don't okay. know. That, that, yeah, it, it might as well just be called very gray. But yeah, it, you know, the base car is like 74. This one was deep in the, I think it was actually like 102, what? which is a ton of money. Uh, that's the prior the old generation. One? Yes, I don't, that is the I don't, F80. I don't care. It's the one with the giant beaver teeth. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's, it's funny. It, it's funny that you're referencing this it. is that as I left the activity last night that I picked up my kid from, I followed out an M4 convertible. And as he pulled out in front of me, I said, look, Declan, beaver teeth. And he was like, I don't. Yeah. I don't get it. And yeah. I was like, look at the front of the car. And he was like, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> it's not that it's not as bad in person as it is on, you know, over glorified pictures, but it is freaking fast. Um, so that left and then the X5 came and the X5 left and I have a V8 Defender 90 for a week, which is the SVR engine, the 550 horsepower, you know, supercharged five liter. And it's in the short wheelbase one. I took it for a drive today and it is hysterical. Like, I haven't driven something that feels this like unhinged in a long time. You put your foot down and it like, it, it does like a drag squat. Like the back end goes all the way down and the nose lifts. And if you do it going uphill, it, it genuinely feels like it's like bringing the tires off the ground. It's, it's hysterical. That's the wow. only like notation to know that it's the V8 is that V8 badge down there. Yes. Those the, blue, the blue brakes. Uh, I was just told by the fleet guy today when he dropped off, that was the 007 edition only. Oh. Blue brakes, but it is so. I'm not sharing the correct picture, which I'm. It's apologizing now because I didn't open Slack to get your photos. That's okay. So it's uh it's rowdy and it's fun and I love it. And then I also picked up a couple weeks ago a Player Sportsman XP 1000 Ride Command Edition, which I did have to read that name and could not remember it completely offhand. Um, but I have that for like three or four months, and it's actually the same unit that the ATV rider team tested earlier in the year. And now I have it to test for ATV rider for the next few months. So, They're like, fine, keep it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So, <laughs> so it's, it's a monster. It weighs like 900 pounds. Um, it has 90 horsepower and it will actually lift the front end in four wheel drive high, which is terrifying to find out because I thought it would just, that's uh, yeah, that is, I think that might actually be Jeff's or coffee's picture. Um, but that's I, mean, the, I might know how to Google. That is the exact quad that I took delivery of a few weeks ago. And uh, it, it's like, it's a thousand CC, you know, four wheel drive quad. It, it's so comfortable and hopefully going to get out on the trail soon. So, but this Saturday, getting out on the trail, probably in the truck, going to go take the Lexus to a little local wheel and spot and do some crawling. Nice. See what, what it can do in four low. And, uh, and now that I know how to completely disable traction control, it'll hopefully go better than last time. And also there's no ice. And also now I know how to turn off the parking sensors. <laughs> you didn't know how to do that. Before. No, it was beeping <laughs> all the time. So, so that's all I got. What about you? I don't even remember. Did I write updates? You said mountain bike time. So uh, I had knee surgery recently and uh, I had a partially torn patella tendon and a partially torn ACL from playing dumb old BI basketball for <laughs> literally no reason. Like I had no desire to be there, but because it was like the dads of my kids, I was like, fine. And 
at the time didn't actually hurt myself. Like I felt something move in my knee, but then played on it for another hour and a half. Like it wasn't bad. Um, come to find out, I partially torn the patellar and partially torn the ACL. And when the, the orthopedic surgeon read the MRI, he was like, you're weird. And I was like, thanks. thanks. <laughs> uh, like, you're going to tell stories about this later, aren't you? And he was like, yep. And I was like, okay. Uh, but I had that repaired at the end of March. And so I'm getting back, like the, the last two days, it's the most like normal I felt. And the, the PT guy the other day was like, you start riding a bike again. I was like, thank God. But then today we had a conversation. He's like, yeah, it's going to be like six more weeks before you can run though. I was like, I don't even want to run. <laughs> <laughs> but you telling me it's going to be six weeks till I can makes me want to do it even less. Like I don't, <laughs> just let me get back on the bike for a little bit. So you be like, dude, you know, you could have just said that is just, you should never run again. And these and are just I, always. Uh, like yeah. See, and I, in my head, I thought that as well. Like, I don't need to run, but then like, because of my kids, every now and then I find myself like hustling short distances and I'm like, Oh, don't run, don't run, don't run. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's kind of like a weird, so like I do need the ability to sprint over short bursts to flag a kid down sometimes. Like <laughs> the little one's quick. She's, she's fast. Like she's not, she's not waiting. So um, <laughs> small children move when they're yeah. motivated, they're, they're out. But I, I have been getting deeper and deeper into van life and, and figuring out all of the stuff that's going on with that. I do think I have potentially some trips coming up. I'm, I'm hoping, possibly. I know I will be in the Ozarks with Jeff in March. In March. The thing that was in May. I'm <laughs> yeah. going to go in May. Yeah. I believed you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> March. March of 2023. 20, yeah. I'm going back. No. Um, I'm, going, I'm going to... Arkansas in May and I'm going to a completely different place because I'm then going back to Arkansas in June and so hopefully it'll be two different trips two different style of trip two different locations but uh the trip in June is I'm going to take the kids with me I think uh and we'll do some mountain biking in Arkansas which would be fun oh. so what are you driving in this uh van? so in the first trip it's the uh it's going with the express rally guys and so Jeff Glucker who's the editor of Hooniverse he's flying in and then I'm going to drive down and then we're going to utilize uh, Scott. I'm blanking on his name. Scott. Scott. Uh, he's got a, uh, a turbo diesel, turbo diesel 80 series. Cool. So Jeff and I are going to drive that. And then the trip in June, hopefully one of the company vans, um, one of the adventure vans at work. Um, and then at the end of June, we're going to go to New Mexico. So things are... Things are picking up. So I haven't been to New Mexico before. I'm very excited to actually go and experience New Mexico. I feel like I'm over Colorado, which sounds incredibly <laughs> weird to say because it's like the Mecca of everything, but like it's next door. And I've been going there since I was in the sixth grade. Like yeah. it, it, I've like, heard great things about New Mexico and I've heard the mountain biking is amazing there. And I've wanted right? to go too. So my, uh, we're going to meet my best friend and his wife. So it's, it's going to be in like an adult only trip. Like oh. my kids, mm -hmm. like, not like a weird adult only to like, we're just going to go down and drink <laughs> some wine and we're going to mountain bike. Like that's it. Like it's nice. very that's calm. So <laughs> nothing, nothing will happen. <laughs> we'll be so tired. <laughs> <laughs> nothing happened. So um, that's it for me. Little league has started. So I'm now doomed. I have three kids in three different leagues. And so right. like the fact that we create shows at all, just, yeah. If you're Impressive. listening to this, appreciate it right now because our schedules are nuts. <laughs> Considering how much shit the two of us do, it's actually kind of crazy. Well, and you're going to complicate it here fairly shortly. Oh, so, I know. <laughs> I know. actually, maybe not really. We'll see. Because, like, I'm going to kind of just be here, not really going anywhere. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me. Yeah. Ross's Ross like, wife is due soon. Yes. So. Very, very yeah. soon. Yeah. So. Yeah. have a young little off-roader with us shortly you already do <laughs> already do yeah <laughs> yeah we've had that conversation a few times like how old like i'm like so they only have to have like basic head and neck control to come with me on the, in the woods right just like mm. <laughs> as long as the seat the car seat's in rear like it's yeah that's, i don't know it's pretty I gassy. yeah so, anyway Hold moving on, on let's talk 10 about months it. at least <laughs> You guys are going to be like the dad's driving podcast or something. You'll like have to do episodes while you're both 
driving your kids oh around. Oh my god, that would be so funny. Drivers. Yeah. Retitle it like from the school pickup lane or something. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I don't. <laughs> <I'm> all, uh, <laughs> sorry, I, I had flashbacks. Sorry. <laughs> the best was like oh, one day. I think I, I know I sent Ross pictures of this. I went to pick up my son because it was snowing. Um, and he's he's old. He, he's the oldest. He could walk on the snow. It was not that big a deal. He is getting old. Um, but as I was in the parent pickup lane in my vehicle, in front of me were three white Toyota 4Runners, each with the ladder on the back. Oh. Three separate vehicles in the parent pickup. I was like, I'm in the Matrix. Like, it has to be <laughs> in the Matrix. Somebody hit copy paste three times. Like, this is not. Yeah. It Did happens. they have lights on them? I didn't get to see the front, but probably. Please. Inevitably. <laughs> probably. We've been talking about Raptor lights recently. We're just like so interested in why, like Would, why they're why are they hmm. on Toyotas now? You you know the purpose of them of them on the Raptor though, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, because yeah, sure. it's over yeah. the legal limit of width. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. But then everyone else just thought they like, look cool, and so they put right. them on there. Yes, I think that's. I'm like, but why is it on a Tacoma? I want to like interview people. And but why do they ask. think it looks Oh my cool. God. That would I be such know. a funny article. I have no idea. Like, Cause I'm hey. sure they all be like, cause they look cool. Like, I don't know. I want to, I kind of want to do it, but we'll yeah. see. Did it be, I don't know. I have it has to lights be. on my 1500 series Avalanche. It looked really cool. <laughs> <laughs> I have no lights on the Suburban. It needs lights. No lights. Raptor lights. I want. <laughs> I don't want. Oh, oh. I don't want the raptor lights. God no. I just want some yellow fog lights because I'm a dork and I want yellow fog lights. I want to I look like a Subaru. Lights. I want to make it look like a giant Subaru. Like yeah. Like, <laughs> My favorite. Like, we have so, one upgrade. Good. Good fog lights makes a huge difference. Right. Yeah. Suburbaru. 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 <laughs> I tried really hard on that one. I'm tired. <laughs> if I can make it sound like a Subaru as well, I would absolutely do that. Oh, you could. You just clog up one header. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> uh, anyways. Okay. So. Where do you has, guys uh, want to start? <laughs> We've got a long list. Yes. Uh, anywhere. Uh, anywhere you want. Last show was in September. Is that right? September of 20? Or yeah. Have we Really? No, 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 no. That, that's left over from Dave, from oh, Texas Dave. That's. I didn't update the date there. I apologize. <laughs> it was probably July mm, or August. Uh, last it was like uh, I, I wanted to say it was like August, like September August of twenty one. Well, yeah. when was the Mountain Overland Expo Mountain West? Because it was just after that. Yeah. So. so there about. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. So, uh, what have uh. you been up to? <laughs> 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 not okay. much some you things to, can we oh start God. with the the overland journal podcast because we referenced it already so let's just start there sure yeah, yeah. so Self promote yourself <laughs> i feel like we talked about this maybe on the last episode actually because i was like i'm so nervous oh right. my gosh it's gonna be so terrifying do you guys have any tips or whatever um so yeah i started as a co-host on the overland journal podcast and uh yeah it's been it's been really great. It's been so fun to talk to, I don't know, all different types of people and have it in voice form instead of words form for a change. Um, but it's weird how, like, if I'm doing them more consistently, then I feel like it's easier. Well, it's not weird. This seems obvious now, but um, <laughs> it's easier and like you're flowing more. And then if it's more inconsistent, I feel like I have to, I'm almost like sitting there for five minutes redoing the intro over mm -hmm. and over again. I'm like, hello, this is Ashley. And I'm like, oh, that was crap. And then I'm like, hello, 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 hello. <laughs> <laughs> weird it out. It's so great. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's been cool. And I really enjoyed um, chatting with, actually, Louisa Bell was one of my favorite episodes. Uh, that was the very first one that went out. Um, yeah, that was a really, really fun chat because we had just met in person before that. So it was fun talking to her about overlanding with kids and her experiences. And yeah, we've been busy chit-chatting with people all over the world. So it's been great. 
It's a Correct. fun way to talk to people that you would otherwise potentially not talk to. Right? Yes. And hear stories that you might not hear otherwise. Yeah. So. It was funny because Richard would hear me doing Zoom calls with people that I was interviewing for expedition portal or overland journal and he's like that is pretty much a podcast like whenever he came in <laughs> like record it <laughs> <laughs> so yeah 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 it's been fun to follow along too we'll say um you know the podcast world tends to be a little critical and like cynical because everybody thinks they're the best but you know it's it's good to hear people that we like doing good things too you know in the podcast world Yay. so keep it going <laughs> Is our you. unprofessional opinion and review. <laughs> yeah, I think sometimes so. like we've been learning a lot about um like dialing it in when we're remote, just like getting the gear right. And there have been a couple episodes that I've listened to and I'm like, oh my gosh. which was like totally a gear thing or whatever. But um where are the- some yeah. of the stranger places you've recorded from? Uh, in the back of a Defender 110 on the beaches of Baja. That was pretty awesome, actually. That sounds fantastic. Yeah. And in a 4 by 4 shop in Saudi Arabia. And... Oh, Marcel in the uh, Kiara's camper. Yeah. Um, it was like a camp... Uh, I guess, is it a sort of a flatbed? Yeah. It's like a camper. Geocar. I can't yeah, it's like a geocar camp. It's, I get to go in <laughs> people's like campers a lot, which is really fun. The camper Geo- shower. It sounds fun. Um, geocar is a new one for me. I haven't heard that yeah. one before. I'm trying yeah, to. Yeah, Austrian. Um, yeah. I believe and that's what it's called. I think that's right. Yeah. Uh, well, it's my Google search is telling me that I need Google Translate for this. So that, yeah. that tracks. Um, what in the hell is look up overland vagabond that is, is that something. them yeah. yeah there you go so these two are from switzerland marcel and kiara and they're really badass <laughs> like um they went through a rock like Ooh. and kind of pioneered the the way for a bunch of other overlanders to transit through uh recently which is pretty it's intense intense yeah, it's yeah so yeah but yeah they're really lovely we had a good time hanging out with them when we were in saudi arabia do you want to talk about saudi arabia yeah <laughs> so seamless transition yeah we try you know yeah. <laughs> something episodes in. the, the, tra- the segues are, are getting there <laughs> Yeah, we spent far too little time there, but um, we felt like it just barely scratched the surface of like the landscape, the culture, the language, which I still suck at Arabic. I was like, <laughs> I can maybe get that I one mean, or two after, words out. After 20 days, you're not going to be professional. No, no. But, but, so you were there for 20, 20 days yeah. all around the rally? Or did you have some... We like, went... Uh, during the Dakar, just mainly because we had some other friends going. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, eight of our friends were in two different trucks or uh, two different Fortuners, and we knew they were going. So thought, we thought it'd be fun just to be there at the same time. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. So the first first couple of days, we yeah, that's us. Um, just hanging out in the desert. I love that comment. WTF are those things? <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. They're awesome. Is that is what they are? Yes. Yeah. So oh, yeah, yeah, we were man. Uh, you were with yeah. Kurt when you were there. Kurt and uh, and Dave and yeah, it was it was really fun just ripping around the desert with those guys, getting stuck. <laughs> of uh, course, she got stuck in the sand. Yeah. But it was so I don't know. So the Dakar was cool. It was so so awesome to see it in person. But I think all of the people we met surrounding that rally was like the best part. So you, if you went back to that uh, 78 series there, um, there was a guy, another one that showed up maybe 20 minutes beforehand and he saw us and he was like, do you want to drive my truck? <laughs> he, he was like immediately hands the keys <laughs> over. We took it for driving the dudes. And That's amazing. So welcoming. It was and very cool. Yeah, we met so many people who were like, come by. And everybody carries these carafts of coffee and tea in their vehicles in their vehicles and 
uh, with these little paper cups. So they come by and they start giving everybody paper cups and filling them with coffee. Really? Is that a rally thing? Is that like just no, something it's that's just thing. cultural? Saudi yeah. Arabia. Wow. Yeah. So if you watch our um, three part oh, three part series on Expedition uh, Portals YouTube yep. channel, mm -hmm. you will see all of those things happening from driving the truck to yeah. the coffee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is it. Yeah. That's so cool. it's the trailer. It was, it was yeah. really nice to. I usually don't film anything because it's such a pain and takes so much effort. Right. <laughs> um, but I felt like for Saudi, we really wanted to share what we were seeing just because it was so intense and a lot of people don't get the opportunity to go and, and visit. Mm -hmm. So I did my best to at least film a little bit. Yeah, it's it's not on the list of places that would be like the first places I would go. Like no. maybe yeah. down near the bottom. Like four yeah. years ago, you wouldn't be able to go. No, it's only opened it's up true. to a lot of like the majority of countries within the last several years. Um, and it's a wonderful place to visit, which was really cool to discover. Were you able to do anything else, any other exploration of the country or like cultural immersion type things when you were there that yeah. were centered around the race? Yeah, so that was the majority of the trip, yeah. actually. Yeah. Yeah. So we did. I think we were just following the race for two or three days, and then the rest was um, spent a lot, a lot of time in the northwest section, uh, in the Tabuk region. This is when they were trying to. They wanted a selfie with. Yeah. With Richard. <laughs> but yeah. Yes. Yeah, so they <laughs> yeah, this group in this little short wheelbase line, Land Cruiser, like seven or eight people pop out of it. And just, <laughs> like, Can we take a picture with you? I'm like, of course. Okay. So. It was super fun. The wadi that we were in, this is Wadi Al Disa. We spent a lot of time in for the people who are watching. Whoa, YouTube. that is yeah. freaking that is crazy. Intense. I felt like I've seen this video before. I know I saw it on Instagram and it's I gross. did not. I was 20 days ago. Got right. to all the way to the end. Well, like I just didn't, I never saw it to the end. Like it, how big those were. Yeah. yeah. You said <laughs> Tabuk was where you were? That yeah. Area? yeah. Okay. I, I'm a, uh, yeah. I'm a Google Maps fan, so it's kind of closer to the border with Jordan, which is which makes sense why the scenery is, is similar to like Wadi Rum in that area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we put, okay. Yeah, we put 5,500 kilometers on the rental car. Wow! So oh, we, we, we're 20 we days. Quite a bit, but we we're uh, pretty tired after that. <laughs> <laughs> what you don't say. <laughs> Yeah. Oh man, that's awesome. That sounds like a crazy trip. So, doing it again, obviously, or hopefully, because like I mean, we want to see the the footage and the you know stories that come out of it. Yeah, we'd love to do the Arabian Peninsula at some point. So include uh, Jordan over to Egypt, Oman, UAE, maybe Kuwait. Mm -hmm. um, but mostly because you know we were just spoiled with how we were treated over there. Because everybody was so friendly, yeah. you know, open, open arms. And the history there is just so, I don't, I know this is, it's like old. I know that sounds really basic, yeah. but there is such a long, 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 long history there. That's so fascinating to read about. And it was really intriguing. So, well, like we, yeah. got, we went and visited, there was a short, you kind of saw in one of the short clips there. We went to this abandoned railway that was created by the Ottoman empire. What? And, and uh, yeah. they, that's and like was, world war one. Mm -hmm. and yeah. that's like that's like young compared to the, some of the yeah, this yeah and, and that was like yeah and it, it was destroyed by the help of lawrence of arabia so <laughs> you're like that's crazy and we went and saw this place that place yeah we weren't allowed to go too close to but <laughs> you know it was what was the last jewish settlement is that what it was or is mm, i can't remember it was this this fort that was six thousand years old good oh. lord and <laughs> Just, yeah. yeah people geek out here of stuff from you know the 1700s yeah like, yeah that's wild that Six thousand years yeah. old yeah jeez that that might be so a fact cool. now, that's what i believe yeah we should fact check it but it was <laughs> something like Six even billion. if you're off by half yeah it's still really old yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean the pyramids are like four thousand years ago so it's yeah. definitely 
you know, within the realm of possibility. For sure. That's crazy. I mean, that sounds like a fantastic way to spend three weeks. Yeah, we wish we had more time. We spent way too much on a rental car. Yeah. We realized that we should have just shipped a truck over there. Really? Probably. Well, it would have been more expensive, but we could have stayed as long as we wanted. Um, fuel was cheap. We paid 57 cents a liter. So what is that? A buck, like dollar ninety something a gallon. Something like that. Yeah, that's crazy cheap. cheap. Yeah, that, that's a sore subject these days too for a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> Speed limits everywhere were 100. 140 kilometers an hour so that's 80 something oh wow so that's uh and when there was 5g in a lot of places like we were almost never in want of a signal um yeah, it made it really amazing yeah, it made it really easy to get around um also it's like the whole place is one giant blm land because there was always an opportunity to pull over explore off the road camp um, were you camping or were you hotel hopping for the trip? Yeah, we 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 camped, so we brought our just awesome. uh, just duffel bag full of camping gear, and we apart hoteled. They're like an apartment sort of slash hotel room situation. Mm-hmm. So we needed a reset sometimes, obviously. So we we did that, and then um, yeah, it was quite windy. So we our tent did blow away one time when we left it undefended uh, by that big crater that you saw earlier um but yeah <laughs> but not into the crater yeah <laughs> no <laughs> that would have been a fun video chasing down the hill. <laughs> yeah so, lots, of, lots of camels are, lots are they just like cows or are they wild uh both okay <laughs> yeah so we definitely saw what appeared to be wild but then we saw a lot that had their uh like the front two uh, their legs kind of roped together so they could run too fast. Of some... yeah, I mean... But they were very curious. I don't know why I've always thought of camels as being aggressive, but they were they weren't at all. They were like <laughs> like this one. Yeah. This one was just like, what's going on in here? <laughs> Hi. So... I guess I, I would like group them together with llamas for like spitters. And so that's yeah. why I would just like, be like, hey. yeah. Yeah. That's for it. Very so... curious. Even horses bite. <laughs> yes. yes, that's true. That's true. Uh, like big. Yeah, the dogs. landscape there is ridiculous. It, it's like a, a pointier day. version of Utah. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. for sure. Same kind of color <laughs> scape. That's their motto. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pointier We're, Utah. <laughs> have a feeling that's not the case uh, that is definitely <laughs> not the case what's the, no. what's the, the story with the like the rock that's like split in two? Oh yeah it was cut by lasers or aliens oh. or it was something environmental one of those things that's so nobody cool. knows uh, no. I like the beware of Jawas comment there. We've been watching <laughs> I was gonna say. Mandalorian, so didn't they film some of Star Wars like deep in the Saudi desert, and that looks like lightsaber? <laughs> sure does look like a lightsaber. Yeah, wasn't was it, it Jordan? Was uh, it Jordan? I feel like it was. Oh. Some of it was Tunisia, wasn't Tunisia. it? Tunisia. Yeah. Or like Northern uh, like Africa. New Hope. I feel, uh, yeah, Tunisia. You're right. I feel like it was wherever they went there on long way. Down. Down. Or down 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 i think down, yeah. down? i think it yeah. was down because that's when they're going to south africa yes yeah oh, i still haven't watched long way up said neither have i it was good it was very good yeah very very well for you guys it would be like i've been there <laughs> that was a lot of that been time. there did that the way, the way it, um, i told my mom come to watch it i said watch what where these guys went we went to the same places <laughs> like, sure whatever <laughs> did it uh or i not necessarily mm-hmm. that but do you ever like get an urge to do one of those enormous trips again or how does that land yeah been planned? for sure yeah we've had that urge since 2019 2020 yeah our plan in 20 was to ship in like March or May of Oops. March, April, May ish of 2020 uh, to Europe and then drive east through Central Asia and Russia and get mm-hmm. to Japan eventually. So 
that's, that's not really problem. possible. We right kind of ran into COVID and then other yeah. things are happening now. There, so, there's I think a lot of stuff things. central Asia is open. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. But um, I think what we're going to do is. We have two plans. <laughs> we have, so we're going to ship a truck to either go to Europe and then kind of see what happens maybe down to Morocco and then kind of head east if things seem okay. Because I want to go to the Balkans as well or like to mm -hmm. Turkey or we could just kind of like spend some time waiting for Central Asia to open up. Um, I don't know how long it's going to take, but the other thing is like, we're going to be running into fall by the time this happens. And so weather is going to get a little bit rough. So kind of another plan is maybe shipping to Saudi, like, cause, and then, cause we have a good contact there, Luai in Riyadh. And he said that, well, as soon as he said that he could receive our truck in Riyadh at his shop, um, I was like, oh, this seems like you're starting to turn in. Yeah. yeah. Well, this yeah. seems great. Fuels cheap. We have a contact. And it's the perfect time of year because they say between October and February is when you should go. Otherwise, it's way too hot. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like we could easily do six months on the peninsula. There's so oh much to see. Well, six it's months most straight. of Holy the country crap. is like BLM style land. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then we, yeah, Oman could keep us busy for a long time. UAE up to Jordan. Um, yeah. So that's our kind of backup plan. plan. But no matter, like, all the back we'll, plan. we'll list the ship in like fall of this year. Okay. Cool. Yeah. That's exciting. But we're, we're probably not. not taking our truck, a red truck. Yeah. What are you taking? We will take our Tundra. Okay. Tundra. Okay. Oh, so we, when we were in Mexico, we spent six weeks or something in Mexico this winter. And uh, Ashley was working full time. Well, she's working full time now for, and like the work, any work I'm doing. The road and yeah so we've been trying to do that work from our little pickup that has no horsepower and is loud and with no air conditioning and no real interior living space i think so we're like we're dumb oh my god this is <laughs> like and camp and live out of that thing but the work out of it well living full-time is it's a bit challenging. Yeah. yeah. So so then we like on our you know thirty hour drive north or whatever it was from Baja, um, we were just trying to figure out what to do next and if we had another option and what other like should we get a Land Cruiser Troopy? Everybody's doing it, but it doesn't really help. Like our pickup is so, our our pickup is just so close to a Troopy already in a lot of ways that it doesn't make sense. For the same purpose. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then. We we're like for the for the longest time i was like oh the tundra is too big for international travel blah 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 and but then i measured it and it's narrower than a sprinter van and shorter mm -hmm. lengthwise and shorter with a camper height wise and you see sprinters everywhere yeah. so it's true and we own it and it doesn't owe us a thing <laughs> so there's that it also so helps Hundred and twenty thousand miles on it right now for two thousand eight. It's pretty breaking miles. Is it? Low. Is it the five seven? Yeah, five seven. So you don't even have and a timing belt. No, I mean chain. chain. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and then yeah, we kind of just made a decision that why don't we just use this thing, and then we went through the whole process of if we use this, what are we going to put on the back? <laughs> <laughs> so we have a uh, mitts alloy tray coming for it nice and we can't say we don't have a camper sorted camper yet. out yet but <laughs> hopefully tomorrow we will but the research is underway yeah so cool. that's fun i think i mean my only exposure to mitts alloy is like the four-wheel drive 27 videos you know like i think that's where most people have seen it so that will definitely be a fun inclusion yeah. on that yeah. a very global truck yeah we and talked that was, to somebody you know, with we were, those when we were in <laughs> saudi it really like i was hit over the head with how global it, it like the architecture is because mm -hmm. all we saw were 200 series land cruises everywhere and there were a surprising amount of sequoias 
like a crazy yeah. amount of sequoias. Really? That is interesting. That, I, that is the first time that I think that has been said. <laughs> exactly. Or we've heard that. Is it what they sell six in Canada and 20 in the States or something? Yeah. Turns oh, Chris out has, Chris I own a home. global truck. Exactly. You can go <laughs> every walk. All right. <laughs> I don't, that's funny. I don't really drive it. My wife does. That's all right. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> she doesn't really like it. She wants a forerunner. <laughs> it is a nicer car to drive around town. Yes. To do that. But, okay. So, uh, so the Tundra's going. Yeah. So we did a, yeah, did a, I just put a transfer flow, 46 gallon fuel tank in it. Wow. And, and some old man Amy B51s. And I For swapped things. out. Probably yeah. And I swapped out. I had some big. Uh, CBI steel skid plates I just took off that were 175 pounds and swapped it oh. for uh, just a TRD Pro aluminum one that was 25 pounds. So we're on like maximum weight reduction uh, possible. program mm -hmm. here. Yeah, where possible. Yeah, so I took the back seat out and yeah. I'm trying to just like save payload where possible and swap it for living space. The mitts alloy trays, that's all aluminum. I'm it's all aluminum. Okay. So if it, when it's complete, it uh, yeah so those those beauties oh, are, um, yeah. keep those though Sorry. Um, That's but yeah the mid alloy tray with all of the drawer with the frontal drawer at the back and the side um, whatever they are side doors the um, uh, they I think that all of that weighs just a little bit more than the box of the tundra does really so if. I may pull, like, remove the trundle bed or trundle drawer out the back mm. just to save a little bit of weight. So this this uh, section right here by the license plate would be the trundle bed, right? Yeah. And then you're the, the four or the three sides. You don't have the sides up top. And then you're yeah. talking about these drawers on the side, doors on the side. Yeah. So there's lots of storage on the side. We'll probably keep it because it looks good and it's super helpful. But um, <laughs> it doesn't if, look bad. If yeah, if we need to cut weight, they may not. They might not make the cut, but we'll see. Do you okay, have enough have room to. for a matching spare? Yeah, so I have a room for a 35 under the okay. bed still because the uh, the transfer flow tank is like a midship replacement tank. Okay. So it just takes space that is being used by nothing. So it's great. Um, it's fun. Speaking of, of weight and tires, are you running Toyo MTs for this I, trip? I, I'm going to run Toyo 83s. 83s. Okay, good, because MTs... They're probably the heaviest tire out there. Short yeah. of like middle ridge grapplers, like the Toyo MTs. They're crazy. Yeah. Um, I quite like the MTs, but as soon as we're Fantastic. adding weight, I went and straight up, or, yeah, I ordered up the AT3s immediately because yep. we've been running those in our pickup and I quite like them. So yeah. I have them on the Lexus and they are fantastic. <laughs> I have them on I the Sequoia. Yeah, they're, they're great. They're great. <laughs> podcast brought to you by <laughs> <laughs> the tires I mean, on my truck are actually brought to you by Toyo, so. <laughs> hold up mine my, my, mine weren't you weren't oh, mm -hmm. I, I had to shell out some benjamins Sorry. open tires on your suburban yeah but we're not talking about them right now no no which i do have a weird story about that that i didn't talk about earlier I, I went and got an oil story. change the other day and they were like, Hey man, your front tires are at like four thirty seconds. And I was like, well, shit, they're brand new in December. Like what? Yeah. And so they're wearing on the outside when I turn where the, a, a normal front tire would wear as you're turning and suburban weighs 6,000 pounds. So did you realign it after you leveled it? Yeah. Like, but that's, it's still like a front tire generally has more wear on the edges because it's actually turning where the rear tires don't and they're normally going straight. But the dipshits at the dealer were like, oh, we won't rotate them because the fronts are too low. I'm like, no, the reason no. they're low on the edge is because they're still on the front. Put them on the back. Yeah. It'll wear they're... evenly. Uh, anyway. Sorry. Also, pr check pressures. Oh, wait, I look at them every day. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I actually do. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm a weird that. nerd. It's PSI right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have, I have the little monitor and the cluster. I know it's three oh, down man. from where I am. Like, I know. Um, after I got the giant screw after I noticed the giant screw in the BMW's tire and had the, you know, TPMS light blinking at me like crazy. I was like, okay, fine. So I got an Alexis to go drive the Lexus and the TPMS light on the Lexus started flashing. <laughs> I was like, oh no. Put some and tape over that one. You're good. I remember that, uh, that I had aired down the spare to 13 PS. I tried to fit it underneath the truck, which did not work. So that was a fun one. So, okay. Toyo 83s. Awesome. Happy that that's what you're doing. Fun for everyone. Yep. Are you, are you in, um, E-rated or C-rated? Uh, e. Yeah. E, okay. That's 
Probably yeah, tomorrow. my guess is that the Tundra will be at GVW, so we'll give them some love. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. And I, I can't say how much I appreciate that you guys seem to always have a photo for whatever we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you test it out. Um, I, I haven't posted lately. I really need to. Yeah. But. I realized I had so many articles and all this backlog of stuff. So I'm trying to push it out, but then I don't want it just to be work stuff that I post, but then I get sucked into the Instagram thing where I'm like, well, I should have a variety of things and here's my plan. And then I just don't do anything. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Instagram feeds on quantity. There there may be three episodes of Instagram posts going out this week for us. (laughs) All right. I might still be working on getting stuff up from uh, from February. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. That's not bad. That's not bad. I just posted something on mine from like July of last year. Uh, that's, <laughs> so <laughs> that's pushing it a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Well, well. yeah. I refuse to do anything out of chronological order. So look it on It's past. It's past. Yeah. Yep. Doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, but people are like, oh my gosh, such a cool story about these two women that drove across America and like so it doesn't matter when it was exactly Mm -hmm. but I'm trying to get Richard to post more pictures of our Saudi trip and he's like "Ah, I'm already done we already already came back (laughs) I've already posted stuff that happened since I can't do it (laughs) well did did you edit a three-part series I'm pretty sure you edited a three-part series like you did the hard work you're good you don't have to do anything else (laughs) video editing sucks yeah it's uh it's time consuming that's for sure yeah it's rewarding and especially when i'm doing it i'm like i should have shot more Mm -hmm. life yeah but then at the same time i felt like i was like wow i was impressed that we were able to make a few episodes out of what we shot totally Mm -hmm. so it's fun yeah the the episodes came together very well everybody everybody listening who hasn't watched them should watch them what are the what's the what are the, the actual titles of them uh ooh. I can't remember what we called them to be honest. Please hold so I'll find it. Um, wasn't it like Destination Saudi Arabia? Ah, yeah. Chris's family. Uh, oh damn okay. again. Uh Overland Destination jerks. Saudi Arabia. That's the podcast. Yeah, so it was on the uh, Expedition Portal YouTube channel. Oh yeah, that was when I was in the spice shop. Okay. Dakarelli and Overlanding the I'll, I'm gonna botch this one. Al Nasla Rock Formation. Yeah. You got it. Saudi Arabia episode one, and then driving over went through Wadi Al Disash. Disash. Disa. Yeah. Disa. And overlanding Tabuk region to Jeddah's old town. So watch those, everybody listening. Yay. Yeah. You can probably just search Expedition Portal Saudi Arabia. They're probably. on ours as well, aren't they? <laughs> They're on our Death to Glory YouTube channel, too. Yeah. Oh, okay. That also is easier. Why, why did people drive tuk tuks from? Kenya to Cape Town. Well, you better read my article to find out. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> Sorry. I, as a to... kid, I lived in Bangkok for two and a half years. So tuk-tuks were everywhere. So like right? when I see tuk-tuks, I'm always like, why? So this is really cool. Um, one thing that's really, really cool is they've converted one of the tuk-tuks into like an overlanding one. And it has like a kitchen in the back and all this stuff. It's yeah. Amazing. There you go. Oh, There's that's so cool. The tuk tuk kitchen. So they're the um, kitchen. These, that's just a wheelie these, machine. <laughs> these British guys are traveling in two tuk tuks uh, to raise awareness um, about uh, African rangers. Okay. Um, so, yeah, they have really good uh, well. reels on Instagram and are doing documentary, I believe, series. And there's an interview with them on expo mm-hmm. portal as well mm-hmm. just about why they're doing it and what they've learned and what's her name tuck south tuck south yeah tuck south yeah very cool. very, very cool project awesome. uh yeah their reels are amazing <laughs> yeah right <laughs> sorry i always get enamored by reels that include elephants sorry <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> like soul yeah like yeah that doesn't <laughs> suck Holy especially shit. with like landscape in the background <laughs> like, what I, yeah they have, i really like their reels a lot uh, those are pretty good okay so as we brush up on um you know 
my falling asleep time. Um, what else have you guys been up to? Where, where have you gone anywhere else that's, I mean, we know you've gone places, but what have been like your highlights since we last recorded? I think Other than done. Saudi Arabia. <laughs> yeah, it was nice to be back in Baja for a while. Yeah, we've been spending a little bit of time in the kind of Prescott area where Overland Journal is based. So that's been nice to get some sun once in a while and meet up with the team and staff. So yeah, that's- Is that like the escape from Canada? <laughs> like go down to Prescott <laughs> <laughs> in the dead of winter? Yeah. yeah. Oh, we we stay with my parents for Christmas. Oh my, I keep blurring, getting blurred. <laughs> um, which was quite nice too. Like went skiing and stuff. So yeah, we were spending, otherwise nothing. Yeah, spending nice time thing. around. I think this was close to, close to Sedona. Uh, we also went spent some time with our friend Ernesto from Overland the Americas. So <laughs> nice just to see friends, especially mm-hmm. in nice warm sunny places. Mm-hmm. Yep. How much Very solar cool. do you guys have on top of Little Red? Uh, two hundred watts. Two hundred watts. Okay. Yeah. So 200 watts and then 100 and, uh, 170 amp hours of AGM battery. AGM. So yeah. in reality, you have half of that. Yeah. 85. <laughs> so I just took delivery of 200 amp hour uh, anti gravity batteries for the our new camper that we don't own yet. But but we have batteries. What? All right. Full disclosure. I don't know what an anti gravity battery. Other uh, lithium. Is. It yeah. floats. Lithium. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I knew <Yeah>. it floated, <laughs> Ross. <laughs> helium. Yeah, anti gravity is the just the brand name. So, but. you said two hundred amp hours of lithium. Yeah. So, so you have like na- now you have like one hundred and eighty of actual lithium. Like yeah. So, yeah, we learned some things from the pickup. And, okay, we need some more power because when I am video editing and um, I've been using a Canon R five to shoot everything, and uh-huh. the codec is not favorable when for editing so i always have to you know i'm always having, always having to create proxies so I'm like upload everything create proxies and let the computer run like for a few hours overnight and i yeah. realized that doing that in the pickup with no table and not enough power was uh not favorable <laughs> not ideal not the best so we worked around that more favorable conditions incoming yeah exactly yeah. That's the, the vans at work have an AGM system and they have a lithium system. So I've learned a ton of crap about, well, with AGM, you only really get half. Yeah. But the, the best part of the, the lithium controller is it tells you exactly when it will run out. Yeah. It's like that, that's like, oh, you have three days, seven hours and 12 minutes of power left. Sounds like the so opening of Donnie Darko. And then you turn something on and it goes down. Now you have two days, four hours and 12 minutes. Left. Like, like very... what, what, what are you guys using for um, power? Is it like a, is it a Victron system? It's Master Volt. Master Volt. Master Volt. <laughs> so it's a 2000 watt <laughs> three in one inverter. Cool. So yeah. nice. And it's the AGM yeah, it's system is something else, but that was the lithium system. Yeah. Nice. Master Volt. But. The funny thing is like the AGM system can send power to the the transit really? battery where the lithium can't. No. It will not play nice. <laughs> no, it is nice when you have the two, like everything AGM and yeah. you can just, yeah, jump your truck, jumpstart your truck with the house batteries. It's a nice option. It is. Sorry, I derailed us. I apologize. No. <laughs> Always. <laughs> We're going to talk about nerdy solar stuff later. So anyway. Perfect. on our free time so over my head well like one of the uh, i'm gonna derail it again one of the options is like a uh god what is it called it's like an m p c c controller m p t t and sure one of the two but it's it's the new one and it's like the cheapest option on the build list and people get to it and they're like well i don't really know i'm like just get it it's so much better <laughs> It's 30% more efficient and you have a boost mode on it after that, like, which nice. means you can go hit boost and then like in the lower hours of the day, like it'll gather more real fast. And people are like, why doesn't it do it all the time? And I was like, well, that's, that's the life of your panel now that you're questioning. Like you don't want it to do it all the time. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. People usually yeah. love doodads like that. Yeah. They're like, I have a boost yeah. button. Some people just don't get it. <laughs> like we refer to the solar as like it's a solar trickle charger 
Yeah. Like it, it, it'll help your van stay topped off, but like, you're not really going to be doing a ton off grid with it. Yeah. But there's stuff in the works. Nice. Solar's, solar's getting better. It is. Yeah. And DC so power, true. DC powered things run better off solar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so maybe an air conditioner, who knows? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Apparently the, the Dometic AC units are pretty good now. The little 12 volt ones. That's the that's we 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 have the AC powered air conditioners. Um, and then we also have the DC powered Dometic ones too. And I love the DC. It's we just expensive. put the AC from our pickup, just right. In. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> just set it, set it right. <laughs> I mean, I know a guy with a water jet, like we can probably get a cut, but <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> I have a four and a half inch angle grinder. We can get her done. Yeah, exactly. You don't need all that other stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I feel like we've touched on everything. <laughs> and more. And more, definitely. Do you guys have anything else that you want to pitch? I don't think so. That's our right. stuff at Overland? Turtle? Yay! Yeah. yeah, we've already done enough shameless plugging. Well, that was... We, we recorded with uh, Texas Dave, who has Rally Ready Driving School down in Austin, Texas. And we get together, we're like, I'd ask you, what do you want to plug? But I feel like we just did it for an hour and a half. So <laughs> <laughs> he was like, yeah, we did. We're good. I've got nothing. <laughs> I was like, yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Richard, you might enjoy the fact he collects coffee mugs. No. Oh. But he only collects Richard coffee mugs. Because in his mind, he uses the nickname for Richard for all of his coffee mugs. And so he can only ever find Richard's. He can't actually find the That's nickname. That's awesome. <laughs> go to this guy's house. Exactly. <laughs> He's got a collection of Richard coffee mugs. <laughs> would, like, would he accept a coffee mug that like you speak owned by Richard? Ooh, I don't know. Mm. I'll send him a text. He would probably <laughs> welcome it with open arms. No, he would no. probably be like, yes, yes, I want that. Especially if yes. it has a coffee mug that has maybe traveled a little. He might be definitely... Ah. Yes. Interesting. Interesting. He, yeah. He just put, Ross, did you see the video he put up today? I'm sorry, it's completely Not, off topic. No. He posted a video of Slick Rick the Party Big. Oh, I did see that. Yeah. <laughs> he, he has a Ford Crown Victoria that's lifted and down the side, the, uh, so it's like a donk, but it's an off road donk. And the uh, livery is Ricky Lake meets Taco Bell. Wow. So they call it Slick Rick the Party Big. And I don't know why I'm describing it because I have the ability to. You can, you have the technology. I, yeah, I just. We. <laughs> I follow him. I know I do. I like you're going to end this on a high note. Yes. Right here. It's, yeah. it's, it's so good. It's really Ricky Lake on the side of it. <laughs> now we know where our tundra is going to get wrapped in. I was not. <laughs> oh, man. I was not expecting her to be on there. Right? To be honest. Yep. <laughs> 1-800 go Ricky on the bump. What is oh, happening? Wow. <laughs> Dave, Dave, Dave. Oh boy. That's great. That's some creative. It's got some creative juices flowing there. Well, that's <laughs> uh-huh. The the best part of that story was they stopped a meeting one time because Ricky Lake had regrammed the thing they tagged her in with the <laughs> 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 like the actual Ricky Lake. Now I'm realizing you guys are Canadian and you know, might not know who Ricky Lake is. Oh, <laughs> yeah, we got all okay. the culture. Uh, we Canadian culture, but like our culture came up and just like, you know, it's two oh. become one there. Yeah. yeah. We also definitely got US television. Yeah, KVOS yeah. 12 or four, whatever it was from Washington. Oh, that's funny. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. I forget sometimes. <laughs> yeah, so it's funny. the same. You know everything you know. Okay, yeah. that's that's generally how I deal with my Canadian friends. Like, you got it. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Most of the references translate. Yeah, yes. There's a lot of stuff that happened in like in back east with like historical Civil War stuff. Don't understand. Yeah, we don't know much about. That. A lot of times, people are like, "Didn't you learn this in school?" I'm like, "No, this wasn't no. our Civil War." Right. <laughs> yeah, like we didn't. It was the war down south. We didn't uh, deal with that. Like, it's, yep. we have our own stuff going on. Exactly. Yeah. Native people issues. Yes. <laughs> See, I know Canadian stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I don't know why, though. Right. Yeah. I don't. You guys are the only Canadians I talk to, really. So. Well, thank you. Yeah, we have a dark Definitely. past up here. It's dark. It's bad. <laughs> anyway, uh, coming on on the next mystery podcast. <laughs>
<laughs> off-road mysteries. <laughs> <laughs> Chris is like, oh, oh. I don't know. do you need me to produce that show too? I'll do that one too. I, I, don't, <laughs> I have no time, but sure, why not? So there was, no there was a, a local sports team, baseball, and there are two people that I really like their opinions when, I, when they talk about baseball. And they have started doing a podcast and they're recording it. They're putting it up on Twitch and YouTube and all that stuff. And they're like, oh, we haven't figured out how to do the podcast platforms. I'm like, pretty sure one of you at least has a podcast already. But it's like, I'll volunteer if I need to. I just want to be able to listen to it. I don't want to watch, I don't have to go to YouTube to get your podcast. Just let me know. <laughs> Says the guy who's on YouTube right now. So. Yeah. Yeah. Is it right? YouTube I have to do it. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. I'll wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> so you can review and rate this show on itunes it's not itunes god what is it called apple podcast i'm old um <laughs> anywhere else you listen to it do it on youtube i don't care you can, i'm out tonight i quit yep do it or don't do it it's fine. <laughs> do it i would say do it and also <laughs> if it's your podcast chris is volunteering <laughs> That's, uh, chris's podcast productions <laughs> I mean, I, it, it is, Jeff gives me crap all the time because he'll be like, oh, you, he'll ask us about an individual, Jeff, the editor of Hooniverse, and he'll be like, oh, you should have them on. I was like, we've, we've had them on multiple times. Like, yeah. clearly Jeff doesn't listen. Um, Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> but also he's like, how'd you get them? I was like, I sent an email. I, yeah. I don't know how people show up. I just contact them. Who are you looking for next before we wrap this up? Who, like top three people you want next? Oh mm -hmm. man, top Travis Pastrana. Oh, he's like know. the he's like the white whale. Like that one's We're out there. We're only one degree away from that, though. That's nice. true. But, um, I'm trying to lock down Grant Bell, but they travel so much. Like, um, yeah. I've, he he and I trade LinkedIn messages. That's how we communicate. Nice. I was like, that's. Can we can I get an email? I don't like LinkedIn this much. <laughs> um, I actually do have his email now. We had him scheduled, and I think I scrubbed it because I had sick kids and it was awful. And yeah. Um, who else, Ross? I don't know. We have a list, a literal Google Doc that's yeah. like 40,000 people long. Caleb Wallace comes up quite a bit just because of like off-road circles of people. Um, Harry Wagner, <laughs> we, we tried to get. Harry Wagner. Uh, let's see. So sorry about the people that we know that ghosted you. <laughs> I, I like how I thought this was going to be a helpful thing. I'm like, ooh. Uh, uh, Scott ooh. Brady. Scott Brady we can't get a hold of. <laughs> yeah. He was like, I'll come on, but I'm going to go travel to the Pacific first. And I was like, cool, we'll, yeah. we'll do it when you get back. And then I reached out after he got back and he was like, yep. That was it. So I was like, all right. <laughs> He's got to reach out again. He's busy. I get it. And that's the thing is like, it, the thing we talked about earlier is like getting a hold of these people and actually getting them in a place at a time where they can actually do it. Like the amount of uh, Garmin in reach messages I've had before of just like, nice. Not gonna yeah. make it. I'm like, all right, cool. Like, we'll do it another night. He and Nina Barlow are our two. That yes, are Nina. Are trying oh. in contact. Yeah. Nina was so. like, I'm in, and then I was like, Hey, we're recording tonight, and she was like, I'm not in. She was <laughs> okay. Yeah, she was like, I am nowhere near to be right now. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, um, I am looking at the clock, and I am apologizing for my energy you're, level. Just you're good. Here. You can be quiet for a little bit because I got a bunch of stuff to eat. So. You can follow Richard and Ashley. It's at Desta Glory and then at Desta Glory underscore Ash. Yeah. And then at Overlane Journals, all one word. Mm hmm And I think that's it for you guys. Do you guys have any other social channels you want to promote? No, that's great. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Instagram, <laughs> even though it's not necessarily updated right now, uh, it's the most up-to-date. Yes. It's if you have any questions, I'm the best. Best. don't hesitate to DM us. Yes. Ex except don't ask what the heck you're driving in Saudi Arabia. I mean, it did say there was one reply to that poor guy who said, like, what are you driving? Like, <laughs> and this, what are those things? Fortuners. That's what this are. is two episodes in a row where we've had Fortunas on because yep. we had Lynn doing Rally Jamel. Jamil? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you guys back to back episodes. So yeah, I didn't guys. see the. We have to respect. Oh, yeah. Respect process time. I'm, I'm <laughs> checking to see who are we recording with next week? I, I was know. I was looking to see if we could if we could shamelessly plug Fortuners again. I don't <laughs> know that we have a guest lined up next week. It was supposed to be Graham again, but it, oh. he was like, "I have." 
he used the word forecast and like when he'd be able to be on next and i was like That's oh almost so tuner. if you if you see another fairly repeat guest next week it's because i reached out to somebody and was like hey bud mm-hmm. <laughs> i need a show <laughs> Uh, follow Hooniverse, the Hooniverse on Twitter, the real Hooniverse on Instagram. I'm at Overlanding Dad. He's no, not like the one from Friends. I have to read it every week. And it's probably going to change soon. I've decided pretty much. Yeah. I don't know. Just over it. <laughs> He's over it. <laughs> I had to say it on the phone to, on the phone today when I was talking to somebody and I was like, oh, no, this is so embarrassing. <laughs> it's just, it's just kind of long. It's not embarrassing. Yeah. Just leave yeah. it like as the one from Friends. Or just no. <laughs> You'll get more followers. <laughs> What's your Instagram handle? No. <laughs> you should just be like at we were on a break. <laughs> <laughs> I bet that works. Well, um, that's it. That's our show. We did it. Thank you guys. Thank, Thank you, you so much us. for having us. It's always fun. It is always it fun. Is. I appreciate it. Yeah.